Hello, friends. You're welcome to the Search the Scriptures lesson. We have been going through the series on the book of Exodus. And we are in chapter 25, chapter 26, and 27. That's what we are looking at in this study. And I pray that the Lord will speak to us, teach us, and guide us through his word in Jesus' name. Let's say a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for your goodness, your love. We thank you for how you've been guiding us. We're about to look at your word, search the scriptures. Lord, we pray that as we open the pages of the scriptures, open our eyes of our understanding that we may behold wondrous things out of your word. We are looking at your instructions, your directives to build the tabernacle, the pattern, the pattern. Lord, I pray you will direct us, guide us. Your words you've laid down for us to guide us, to teach us, to direct us. Lord, we pray that not just studying, but we'll also be doer, doers of your word. Give us the grace to be doers, O Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Once again, you're welcome to the Search the Scripture study. And our text is taken from Exodus, like I said, Exodus chapter 25, 26, and 27. Now let's come to the text in Exodus chapter 25, verse 1. He says, And the Lord speak unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they bring me an offering of every man that giveth it willingly with his heart ye shall take my offering and this is the offering which ye shall take of them gold and silver and brass and blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen and goat's hair and ram skin dyed red and badger skin and shitting woods, oil for the light, spices for anointing oil, and for sweet incense. You see, Moses had been on the Mount Sinai to receive the Ten Commandments for 40 days and 40 nights. God commanded him to take offerings from the children of Israel to make the tabernacle the Ark of the Covenant and the Brazen Altar. Look how it says in verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they bring me an offering. Of every man that giveth it willingly with his heart, ye shall take my offering. This was a free will offering and the people came out and they gave we give to the lord why because he loves us he first loved us he gave himself his son to us for us to redeem us to bring us out of bondage and what more can we do but to love him back to serve him to do his good pleasures that is why he brought us out, for us to serve him. He said to Moses, bring them out, that they may serve me on this mount. On this mount. And the Lord has brought us out to his marvelous light, that we may serve him. And also give ourselves, not just our offering, not just our treasures, our talent, and also our time, our energy to the Lord. And the Lord will bless us mightily in the name of Jesus. Now we are considering three points under this topic. The topic which is divine instruction on the pattern of the tabernacle. Divine instruction on the pattern of the tabernacle. The point one is spiritual significance of the erection of the tabernacle spiritual significance of the erection 
of the tabernacle. Why point number two is salient features of the furnishings of the tabernacle. Point number three is sacred directives on the altar of burnt offerings in the tabernacle. Let's come to the point number one, spiritual significance of the erection of the tabernacle. Now let's come to the text in Exodus chapter 25 and I read from verse 2. Speak unto the children of Israel that they bring me an offering of every man that giveth it willingly with his heart. Ye shall take my offering. And this is the offering which ye shall take of them, gold and silver and brass and blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen and goat's hair and ram skin dyed red and badger skins and shitting wood oil for the light spices for anointing oil and for sweet incense so the lord gave details on the things he needed from the children of israel gold silver brass blue talking about fabric blue um, purple scarlet fine linen goats hair rams skin dyed red and all sort of things that he mentioned to moses and you might be wondering where they got the gold the silver the brass god had all things planned yes he's god he knows the end from the beginning. And remember, he told the Egyptians, he told the Israelites in Exodus chapter 12, verse 35. And the children of Israel did according to the word of Moses, and they borrowed of the Egyptians jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, so that they lent unto them such things as they required, and they spoiled the Egyptians. They spoiled the Egyptians in a subtle manner. God gave them what? Um, favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And that is where they got all this that the Lord mentioned, told them. He said, I need your gold. I need your silver. Some fundings that the ministry needs and you have it in your possession and you're, you're finding it hard to give to the Lord. Remember, the Lord gave it to you. The Lord provided for you. Imagine the Israelites Holding, holding their golds. Imagine the Israelite holding the silver that the Lord gave to them. He granted them favor in the sights of the Egyptians. And the Egyptians lent to them those things. And it's time for you to offer to the Lord and you refuse. Believers are like that today. The Lord is calling you to give your time, your energy he gave to you. He wants it back. Your time, he wants it back. The funding, your money, your treasures, he wants it back. Will you give to the Lord? Definitely, giving to the Lord is multiplying it again. And the Lord owes no man. He owes no man. Come to the verse in 8. And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them according to all that I show thee after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments thereof. Even so shall ye make it. And they shall make an ark of shitting wood two cubits 
and a half shall be the length thereof, and a cubit and a half the breadth thereof, and a cubit and a half the height thereof, and thou shalt overlay it with pure gold, within and without shalt thou overlay it, and shalt make upon it a crown of gold round about. Alongside the tabernacle, God also commanded that the Ark of Covenant be made with detailed instruction on how it was to be constructed. Yes, the Ark symbolizes God's presence in the tabernacle. It was to be positioned in the most holy place within the veil where the high priest alone entered in once every year with the blood offered for the people and for himself, the high priest. This is similar to the priesthood of Christ. Jesus, by the blood he made for us a new and a living way into the holiest place of the new spiritual tabernacle. You know, we now have the holy and the boldness through him to appear before the Lord. He says, come boldly unto the throne of grace. It's through the blood of Jesus. Yes, he has given us access. Now we can come, we can go into the throne of grace. I pray that that blood will continue to speak for us. That blood that bought us, his love sought us, and by his grace we are standing and we have gained access to go boldly onto the throne of grace. That grace will be abundant in your life, will multiply your life, it will sustain you keep you standing in the grace in Jesus' name. There were three significant materials inside the ark. And one is the two tables of stone upon which God wrote the Ten Commandments. Two stones, table of stones. But do you know what? In the new dispensation, he gave his word and his promise. He said, I will write my word in the table of your hearts now not on stones anymore your hearts your hearts so this is the golden pot of manna the golden pot of manna is where the the bread the manna was placed and do you know what where the presence of god is the word also is always there the word, Christ personified, he is the bread of life. And also we see it in that other perspective of the word, the, the, the manner being the word. He says that the people, our fathers, ate bread and they all died in the wilderness. For Christ came and he is the bread of life. We are eating the bread, the word of God and it keeps us standing. It refreshes our spiritual being. It renews us as we go through, as we eat spiritually. He says the third one is Aaron's rod that budded. A messy seat was also to be made and the material to be used to be to craft it must be of pure gold. It was detailed pure gold it's not just gold pure gold also the table of showbread otherwise called the bread of presence was to be made of shitting wood and overlaid with pure gold the lord also commanded moses to make a candlestick and a lampstand pure gold pure let's see in verse 30 and thou shalt set upon the table showbread before me always, and thou shalt make 
a candlestick of pure gold. Of beaten work shall the candlestick be made, his shafts and his branches, his bows and his knobs, his flowers shall be of the same, pure gold. In verse 37, And thou shalt make the seven lamps thereof, and they shall light the lamps thereof, that they may give light over against it. Christ is the light. He's the light of God. He's the light of the world. And also we are lights. If you're saved, if you're washed, if you're purified, you're a light. A light in the world. Christ says, as long as I'm in the world, I am the light to the world. And he says that it may give light over against it. Look at what it says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 14. Ye are the lights of the world that is set on and hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on the candlestick and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. It giveth light unto all that are in the house. He says, that it may give its light over against it. Let it shine forth. You're in your place of work, let your light shine. In your place of business, let your light shine. In verse 16, it says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. I pray that the Lord will help us. That our light will continue to shine forth in the name of Jesus. Let's come to the next point, the point number two. Salient features of the furnishings of the tabernacle. Now we come to Exodus chapter 25. Sorry, Exodus chapter 26. Chapter 26, I read from verse 1. Moreover, thou shalt make the tabernacle with ten curtains of fine twine linen, and blue and purple and scarlet, with cherubims of cunning works shalt thou make them. The length of one curtain shall be eight and twenty cubits, and the breadth of one curtain four cubits, and every one of the curtains shall have one measure. The five curtains shall be coupled together one to another, and another five curtains shall be coupled one to another. The pattern of the design of the tabernacle was made clear and more comprehensible in this chapter, in Exodus chapter 26. And here we have the details of how the tabernacle was to be furnished. The ordained furniture for the tabernacle included the inner curtains, which are 10 in number, 5-5. Five, five. And their couplings, the color chosen for them are blue, purple, scarlet, and were to be embroidered with cherubs as a mark of divine ownership. Look at what it says in verse 9. Thou shalt couple five curtains by themselves and six curtains by themselves and shall double the sixth curtain in the front of the tabernacle. Boards were to be made for the tabernacles to bear the curtain. You know, curtains without boards could easily lose their stability. You need boards and cotton when confronting with strong wind. You know that. And it would not be proper for people outside to see through the curtains. We need 
the thicker one. That is why it was instructed to get what um, um, dyed animals skin, a ram skin, a goat hair, to make it a bit thicker. The board were to be coupled with gold rings, both at the top and beneath, and were to be held firm by the bars fitted to the sockets to join them together. God directed two veils to be made of blue, purple, and scarlet. The veils were to serve as partition between the holy place and the most holy place. In the most holy place was placed the Ark of Testimony, the Ark they made, overlaid by the mercy seat. In the holy place, without the veil, the table of showbread was to be set on the north side, while the candlestick was to be placed towards the south. The second veil was to be hanged at the door of the tent. There are more important lessons to draw from this commandment God gave to Moses concerning how the tabernacle was to be furnished. And we need to learn from this. When we look at the study, at these chapters, and you try to apply it in your life, the lessons learned, one is, believers must portray total unalloyed and undiluted obedience to God. Moses did exactly what God told him and he didn't buy any other idea at this point. Our last study, he looked at the idea, the cancer of um, Jethro, the last two studies, and he did likewise. He prayed about it, but this time he got a direct instruction at the mount when he went to receive the commandments, the Ten Commandments, God spoke to him. God showed him the pattern. And God spoken to you. Uh, there's a pattern. How a believer should live. Christ is the pattern. He has lived his life. Written on, in the scriptures for us. To follow his word, his steps. There's a pattern. How do you speak? There is a pattern. How do you worship? There is a pattern. Christ is the perfect example for us. Two, servants of God must be sensitive and ready to move at God's commandments. At God's command. When God says go, as a servant of God, must be sensitive, must be ready to go at his command verse the next the third is god's presence is with believers as symbolized in the tabernacle as the ark god is always with us he's emmanuel god with us he came and he dwelt among us and is living in you if you're saved because he said and he's still saying to those that have refused to accept, I stand at the door of your heart and I knock. If any man hears my voice, at the point where you hear his voice and you open up, there he comes into your heart and he dwells there. He said, I will make my abode. He will make your heart his abode. And the Lord will continue to remain as long as you stand by him. You keep his word and you walk in his precepts. The fourth is, the tabernacle foreshadows Christ, who is the real embodiment of God's presence. Yes. And now let's come to the third point. Third point. Sacred directives on the altar of burnt offering in the tabernacle. Come to the next chapter in our text, Exodus chapter 27, and I read from verse 1. And thou shalt make an altar of sheeting wood, five cubits long and five cubits broad. And the altar shall be four square, 
and the height thereof shall be three cubits and thou shalt make the horns of it upon the four corners thereof his horns shall be of the same and thou shalt overlay it with brass and it says in verse 19 and all the vessels of the tabernacle in all the service thereof and all the pins thereof and all the pins of the court shall be of brass and thou shalt command the children of israel that they bring thee pure olive beating for the light to cause the lamp to burn always. Other vessels associated with the altar were pants, shovels, basins for collecting the blood of the animals poured out by the priest, the flesh hooks, and fire pans for carrying the fire of the altar. Remember, the fire must be taken from the brazen altar every morning and it must not go out fire here symbolizes the holy ghost you see when we look at our life and it says fire that the fire should burn in verse 20 and thou shalt command the children of israel that they bring thee pure oil olive beaten for the light to cause the lamp to burn always to cause the lamb to burn always and let's come to ourselves are you burning is the light the fire still burning in you or you cold or you lukewarm when you look inwardly what are those things that has quenched, extinguished your fire? What are those things that has quenched your fire? Are you not bothered? Like the Lord said, like the fire should not go off. That the fire should burn always. In Leviticus, that it should burn continually. The Lord warned the people. He warned the church. Let's open to Revelation chapter 2 from verse 5. It says, Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do thy first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and I will remove thy candlestick, out of his place except thou repent it says i will take away that candlestick except you remain the light that keeps you why not say lord i repent even you see your fire going off you don't want to cry to the lord or do you want to just remain like the Foolish virgins know oil in their lamp and they are comfortable with it. You believe I know oil in your lamp and you're comfortable with that. Why not talk to the Lord and say, Lord, give me oil. Keep me burning. Keep me burning to the close of the day. Give me oil. Lord, I am going down. My heart is growing cold my spiritual life is going cold help me say lord i come he will help you begin to talk to the lord i say lord please i need your oil for the light to burn always you need the oil for the light to come you need to rededicate and reconsecrate yourself to the lord let it burn let it burn, let it burn, let it burn. The lamp, the fire must not go off. 
you must not grow cold because his grace is made available for you. He wants you to come at this point to come boldly onto the throne of grace. Why not say, God, I, Lord, I come. I know my life is going cold. Lord, I need you. I need you to pour your fire in my heart. I need the fire from your coals, the coals of your altar. I need the fire from your altar to come into my heart to set me ablaze. Why not talk to the Lord and he will do it. Are you comfortable with little oil, little fire? Are you comfortable like the foolish virgins? How can you watch when you have no fire? How can you see through? How can you pray? Why not say, Lord, deliver me from coldness. Deliver me from lukewarmness. Help me that the fire will come upon my heart. Remember, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Why not say, Lord, we just looked at the tabernacle. The descriptions, the dimensions, the, the descriptions of the things to furnish the temple. One who said, Lord, you fashioned me in your way. Help me to live for your glory. Help me to live for your purpose. Help me talk to the Lord and he will do it. Your temple is not pure. You can come to the Lord and say, Lord, sanctify me. If you're not saved, say, Lord, purge me, save me, wash me with your blood, and he will do it. He will do it. He will do it. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen.